been asked to just spend a few minutes to explain the significance of the Sikh marriage ceremony. The ceremony that you're about to witness is really a metaphor for life. It's actually a metaphor for a human journey, a journey of discovery, in which a human tries to find out what the purpose of their life is. It ultimately seeks to answer one fundamental question, why am I here? What is the purpose of my being here? In reality, everyone is looking for happiness. We go to work, we earn some money, so that we can provide for our, fa for our family, provide shelter, provide food. And once we get all those things in life, then we look to surround ourselves with comforts. We buy ourselves clothes and gadgets and whatever comforts we feel will give us a little bit of happiness. And in the same way we deal with human relationships, we also get married because we want to be happy with our partner, we want to live with our partner, and we even have children because even that is a source of happiness for us. But rarely do we ask, is that it? You see, the universe has created billions and billions of stars and galaxies and planets and solar systems and suns and moons and every single individual planet has billions and trillions of life forms in there. And if the universe has created so much and has created you, surely the universe could come up with something more interesting to do with your life than just to wake up and go to work and earn some money and that's it. But rarely do we ask this question, well, why am I here? What's, what's, what's the purpose of it all? And the Sikh wedding ceremony that you're about to witness is really looking at a human discovery to try and find out something more. It's about a man asking himself a question, why, why should I wake up in the morning and do these things anymore? The ceremony starts with a palla rasam, a tradition of the bride being given away. And the words are read out, Habbe saad kurave dite and what it indicates is that there is an intention towards giving up kurave, giving up false relations, giving up false relationships with family and friends, and dedicating your life to a higher purpose. This might seem quite strange to start a wedding ceremony like this with actually a message that says, I give up all of my friends and family. And actually the reason for that is it sets a reminder. It sets a reminder that no relationships in life are permanent. Nothing's actually going to be permanent. Your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your husband, your wife, your children, all of these relationships in life are actually temporary. And if you spend your whole life just surrounding yourself with your friends and your family, you'll find that you've kept yourself really busy. But you've never developed a relationship with yourself. Now you might ask, well, why do I need to develop a relationship with myself? What, what does that mean? What we're not talking about is just spending quality time with yourself and just doing more things that you enjoy in life. That's not what we're talking about. What I mean when I say that we never develop a relationship with ourselves is the whole universe has created everything and the universe has created you. In order for you to understand the universe, you have to understand yourself because you're the only thing that you have access to of the universe. The only bit of the universe that you have full access to is yourself. So to understand the universe, you understand yourself. And what I'm talking about building a relationship with yourself is actually to find out what are you? What are you made of? Why are you here? And that's what the Sikh wedding ceremony really seeks to answer. If you enter every personal relationship in life with understanding that actually it's going to be temporary, it sets 
an intention for you to constantly focus on yourself as well, on developing yourself. And this process of understanding yourself and realizing yourself is represented in four stages, and you're going to see those four stages acted out. The four stages are called love. Interestingly, the word love actually means to break connections. The word love, four love, means to break connections. And just as the bride breaks her connection with her parents' home and moves into her new home, her husband's home, so is the process of us realizing ourselves. By breaking connections with the temporary pleasures that we surround ourselves with and actually focusing on something deeper. The first love begins with Harpalari love Parvirti Karam Dridaya Balaram Jiyo. The first step in trying to find a deeper purpose in life involves Parvirti Karam, spending time on yourself, working on yourself, understanding your own mind. Bani Brahma Ved Taram Dridho Pabhatajaya Balaram Jiyo. And in order for you to understand yourself, you need to have a guide a guru. You need to learn from other masters who've learned how to understand themselves and how to break away their own bad habits, their own troubles in life. How to leave negative habits behind and how to start transforming your own life. In reality, we all think that we know ourselves. Everyone in this room thinks that they know themselves. And if I ask you, what do you know about yourself? What you're going to tell me is your name, your family, your likes, your dislikes, your goals, your aspirations, and that's about it. It's a very superficial layer that we understand about ourselves. But I ask you, who controls the thoughts that come into your mind? Who's in control there? Why are you not able to control when you get happy, when you get sad, when someone makes you angry, you're not, you're not able to control that, when you get upset? So when you begin to analyse your own mind, you realise that you're not in actually in that much control. The mind is our master, we're not the masters of our mind. Even now, this very moment, while I'm talking right to you, some of you will be completely lost in a different trail of thought. Some of you might be thinking about work, you might be distracted by something else that somebody else is wearing or some, someone else is doing something. You might be thinking about booking a holiday, you might be thinking about some duties at home. And that's not because you don't want to be here and you don't want to be present in this moment. It's simply because you haven't learned how to master your own mind. You haven't understood what your mind is doing. And within your own mind, all of your unhappiness exists, all of your pains, all your suffering, all your habits, all of your issues, all of your problems, all of your depression, is all in your own mind. So even after a few minutes of understanding ourselves, you realize that you actually need to dig a lot deeper. We need to spend a lot less time in our minds, and a lot more time in something deeper than our minds. And if you're lucky and you start moving into that space, which is outside of the, the mind, you realize that there's a lot of happiness and bliss in that area. And once you start looking at your mind, you start realizing that we have a space that's outside of the mind. Within you, you have something that's slightly separate from the mind. There's a state of being that's outside of the mind. But most of us don't even know it exists. All day, we spend just completely lost in thoughts completely lost in thoughts. So we don't actually know that there's a state of being that's separate from the mind. And when you tap into the state of being that's separate from the mind, this inner being, then you're ready to start the second love. Har dujri love satgur purkh milaya balaram jiyo. In the second stage, your guide, your guru, teaches you how to spend time with your own inner being. Har Atma Ram Pasarya Swami Sarabraya Bharpura. And that inner being that's in you is everywhere else and in everything else. That inner being that's in you 
is in the person who's sitting right next to you right now. That inner being that's in you is inside all of your friends and inside all of your enemies. Antar bahar har prab eko mil harjan mangal gai. Inside us and outside of us, this one being exists. And when you begin to see it, when you know it, your heart will begin to sing and your life will become a song. Now you've started the second love. You've started the second stage. And the second stage is about becoming more connected with yourself. And this is where the two of you need to spend time with each other and remind each other this is what your purpose in life is. You must look out for each other and remind each other that there's a spiritual side to your life, not just con constantly looking forward to the next enjoyment in life. It's about finding a true purpose behind you. Then we begin the third stage. And in the third stage, your priorities in life begin to change. Once you've known this di divine phenomenon that exists within, within you, you start to become detached from family life, from the hustle and bustle of daily life. Now this doesn't mean that you abandon your wife and your children. It doesn't mean that you just go away and become a renunciate. No, you carry on doing all of your family duties. You carry on providing for your family, looking after your, your, your house, your home, your wife, your children, your husband. But it means that you're not focused solely on these things. You have a greater purpose in life and you have a greater purpose because you've known something greater within you. And then you begin to also surround yourself with other people who are also doing the same thing, who are also on the same spiritual path. This is called Sangat. And the third love says, Har Pijari love, Man Chao Bhaya, Bair Ragiya Balramjiya. You get a desire for this state, Chao, Man Chao Bhaya. The mind becomes blissful and it becomes desiring of being in this inner state and you become a Bairagi. You become detached from the world, from worldly pleasures. Santa Janahar Mel Harpaya Varpagiya Balramjiya. And in the company of other people who are also on this path, you help them merge and they help you merge. And if both of you are on the same path, if both of you are on the same path of finding your inner journey, then there's no better person to be married to than somebody who is also on that path. This will elevate the two of you from just a normal union to a truly spiritual union. And that's why we call this ceremony the Anand Karaj, the spiritual union. And together your lives will have a focus. And it will define the very essence of your lives together. Once you've done all these things, once you've realized that there's something more in life, once you've realized that I'm not going to spend all of my time on my mind, I'm going to spend a bit more time on my inner self. Once you find yourself becoming a bit more detached, once you surround yourself with other people who are also doing these things, the fourth love is the fruits of your hard work. And you become a state of inner aware. And this is known as Gurmuk, self-realized, self-awakened. And the fourth love describes has Jokari love, Man Sahajibaya, and in this fourth and final state, I found bliss, ultimate bliss, ultimate tranquility, ultimate contentment. I found this within myself. And once self-realized, once I've realized the connection between myself and the universe, my mind, my body, my life becomes sweet. Manatam Mithalaya. Har Mithalaya Mere Prabhupaya Anadin Har Livlai. With the grace of the universe, I have now found the sweetness in my life, in my own divine self, and day and night I remain in this bliss. When you're no longer at the mercy of your mind, when you're no longer just looking for the next fix, the next thing to keep you happy. When you're no longer chasing after your mind's desires, 
you then have everything you ever wanted. You find a state of ultimate happiness. You're truly content in life and life, life has never tasted so sweet. And this is the ultimate stage of your lives together. When you know that there is a divine essence, a divine nectar to your life, and once you've tasted this umbrella, your purpose in life has been found. The wedding ceremony ends with the song of bliss, Anand Sahib. And this is the state that you're in when you found the true nature of yourself and you found the true connection with the universe.